What do you wish of me? If you must. Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? Would it not be easier simply to poke at me with a stick? Hmm, I think I will elect to answer the question for now, if you do not mind. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. For the most part, Flemeth taught me well. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. I think not. I am no frail flower wilting at the first heat. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be travelling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? Do not speak to me of trivialities. Your culture is not so entirely different. There were many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand at all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. Yes, here I am. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? What do you need? You don't have to do that. I know you didn't know him as long as I did. Don't worry. So long as we're looking at taking down that bastard Loghain, I won't be losing any sleep at night. And thanks for the warm concern. For a moment there, I thought you might actually have cared. What do you need? Ask away. Such as they are. That's a good question. There's plenty in Orlais, but who knows where they might be found. And the nearest Orlesian city is weeks away. If we go north and cross the sea, there's bound to be some in the free marches. Again, however, I just don't know where. I don't know anything about Grey Wardens in other lands. Here in Ferelden, there's our compound in Denerim at the palace, but that's it. Loghain will have control over that and be watching it, no doubt. Beyond that, the only place I know of is Weishaupt Fortress. That's the headquarters of all Grey Wardens in the Anderfels, a thousand miles from here. But I've no idea how to even contact them. So unless we try to get back to the compound in Denerim, I suppose the answer is no. There's nowhere for us to go. I imagine that eventually the Grey Wardens outside of Ferelden will wonder what's happened. Why there's no contact from Duncan or someone. 
They'll send someone eventually. Though who knows what Loghain's people in Denerim will tell them. Maybe they won't send anyone. We could try to contact them. But that would mean leaving Ferelden, and even if we did, they couldn't come back with us in time to stop the Blight. So that means whatever happens, it's up to us. Just left? You mean just left Ferelden? I don't know. If there's an Archdemon, however, we're supposed to be the only ones who can defeat it. And that means the Blight would grow unchecked. Eventually, other Grey Wardens in Orlay and other lands would hear about it and they would come to fight it, but they wouldn't come in time to save Ferelden. There's no way. I'm not going anywhere. I mean, eventually we would have to use the joining to make more Grey Wardens, right? But I don't know how to do the joining or what's involved. I know it involves Lyrium and some other magic and that it's really difficult to prepare, but that's it. Unless we can find out more about the joining, I guess we better get used to the idea that there might only be two of us for now. Until more come from elsewhere. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Ask away. Same way you did. You drink some blood, you choke on it and pass out. You haven't forgotten already, have you? I do my best. <laughs> what can I say? Let's see. I was in the Chantry before. I trained for many years to become a Templar, in fact. That's where I learned most of my skills. It's really for the best. I'm not exactly the Chantry type, if you haven't noticed. I don't think I would have made a very good Templar. The Grand Cleric didn't want to let me go. Duncan was forced to conscript me, actually, and was she ever furious when he did. I thought she was going to have us both arrested. I was lucky. I don't know. Maybe. When he came looking for recruits, I just remember praying fervently to the Maker that he would pick me. I'll always be thankful to Duncan for recruiting me. If it hadn't been for him, you know, I would never... I wouldn't have. Yes, you're right. I should be angry for what happened to him, not sad. I shouldn't forget what Loghain did. Come on, let's go. I think I'm done talking. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I have had dreams. This was different somehow. When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. No, not voices. It's not so simple. He spoke directly to my soul, in a language no human tongue can express. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the Black devours everything? He's still here. I hear him in the wind and the waves. I feel him in the sunlight that warms my skin. I know what the Chantry says about the Maker, and what should I believe? What I feel in my heart, or what others tell me?
They said my ideas were blasphemy. But is it so bad if what I believe gives me comfort? If it could give someone else comfort? I know what I know, and no one will ever make that untrue. 